Welcome to First Southern. We are so glad that you're here with us today, and we hope that you grow in your relationship with Jesus through today's worship and prayer and word. And one of the ways that we are excited to do that is we have a pastor standing by uh, that is looking forward to having some discussion with you today. So what we would ask you to do is go over to the comments section, uh, drop us a good morning or hello, and let us know that you're there uh, so that we can create and have some wonderful discussion with you today. Now, if you're new to First Southern, we would love to get connected with you and answer any questions that you might have about Jesus or uh, our church and the ministries we have. And so what I would ask you to do is uh, swing over to our website. Uh, There is actually a link in this post. Swing to our website, click on the contact us page and fill out the form there. We'll have somebody reach out to you this week who would love to answer any questions you may have about our church or about Jesus Christ. One way or the other, we hope that you are blessed and that you grow in your relationship with Jesus through today's worship prayer and message. Good morning. We're going to start worshiping this morning uh, with King of My Heart. Oh, no, no. 
We're going to introduce a new song right now. It's called Battle Belongs uh, by Phil Wickham. Uh, just a great reminder uh, that God is in control of over anything that you're going through and that the uh, battle belongs to him. So I hope you enjoy. What a wonderful time of worship. 
Now, let's move into a different aspect of worship by going to the Lord in prayer. So will you join me as we go to our Savior? Almighty God, we thank you so much for today, and we praise you and thank you for who you are, for, for your might, for your power, your knowledge and wisdom, for, for your perfection, Lord, for your righteousness, and most of all, personally, I thank you for your mercy and your grace through your love. Lord, it's through your son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth uh, and lived a perfect, sinless life so that he could die on a cross to save us from our sins. And on the third day, he rose from the grave, proclaiming victory over sin and death. And Lord, we thank you that he was willing, out of your love for us, to come to this earth and die in our place so that we could be saved from our sins. And Lord, I pray that if there is anybody watching or listening right now, I pray that you would move through your Holy Spirit on their hearts. Lord, if they know you, that you would move on them to grow in you, that their relationship, their knowledge, their intimacy with you would grow all the more. And Lord, for those who don't know you today, I pray that through Jesus Christ, that they would come to know you, that they would be willing to reach out to someone to ask the questions, to, to help someone, have someone help them understand what Jesus did for them. And so, Lord, we pray that you would move on people's hearts today. And so, Lord, in light of that, we pray first that you would forgive us of our sins. Uh, Lord, we recognize that we have all sinned and we fall short of your perfect glory. And we would pray today that you would move on our hearts to forgive us to convict us, to, to help us understand why those sins uh, are not your plan and not your purpose for our lives. And that you would help us in turn to forgive others uh, as you have poured forgiveness over and over and over into our lives. We pray that we would in turn pour forgiveness into the lives of the people around us, that, that we would be an example of the love and the mercy and grace that we have in Jesus, that others would understand your love because of the forgiveness that we give to others. Lord, we pray that you would help us to live in you, that we would seek to live righteous, godly lives, and that we would avoid the temptations and sins uh, that are in our lives, that we would follow the escape route that you've provided, the escape route away from our sins and our temptations, just as your word promises in 1 Corinthians 10. So help us to live more like you, that we would lead every generation to the life-changing hope of Jesus because of the lives that we live, that we would be ambassadors of you by the way we speak and by the lives we live, the things we do. And so Lord, we pray today that you would open our minds and hearts to who you are, to your will and your purpose in our lives, that we would know you better, know you more, and grow closer to you through today's worship prayer and through your word. So open our minds and help us to be submissive, to be subject to your leading, and that you would put all of our pride all of our sin, all of our temptations, that you would put that away so that we can grow to be more like you. We thank you and we pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. I'm so excited for today's message because today, you're not gonna be listening to me. You're gonna be listening to one of our local missionaries who uh, is a missionary in Southeast Asia. His name's Todd. Uh, many of you know Todd and his wife, Katie, and their family. Uh, they were members here at this church for many, many years. Uh, and so he's gonna be bringing the message to you because we are beginning a season where we will be uh, collecting donations for our international mission board. In other words, the organization through our denomination uh, that sends missionaries around the world to tell people about Jesus. Uh, and Todd is part of that group, uh, and I am so excited for the word that he's going to bring today. Now, I, I need to address just one little piece of business uh, before Todd uh, comes and brings the message. Um, 
Todd and Katie uh, are in a new position in this region of Southeast Asia that they're located. Uh, and because of this new position, uh, their security has become a greater concern to the International Mission Board. And as a result, uh, Todd has asked me uh, to convey to all of you to not share the location where he is doing ministry, the country, and to not share his last name on this online forum. So you can say hello to Todd and Katie, but please do not use Todd and Katie's last name or the country that they're located. Uh, this is for security reasons, for Todd and Katie's safety, and so that they can do more work uh, in the Southeast Asia region where they're located. And so we please ask that you would honor uh, that request. We are not sharing it uh, on our online platforms or our website. And I'll be honest, if any of you uh, write a comment that includes Todd and Katie's last name or the country that they're located, we will be deleting those comments for Todd and Katie's safety. So we ask, uh, please do not use their last name or the country uh, that they're located in. But that being said, I'm so excited to have Todd come and speak to us from God's word. And so God bless and enjoy today's message. Good morning, First Southern Baptist Scottsdale. My name is Todd Miller. My wife, Katie, and our four kids are workers sent from this church, our home church, to Southeast Asia. And I'm excited to be able to share with you again this morning. It's my privilege uh, to be able to be with you. It really is. Like, I'm grateful that Chad would give me uh, the opportunity to share again. And certainly at this time of the year, which a lot of, a lot of times we think about um, it, the benevolence of Christmas and the holidays that are coming, as well as the uh, opportunity to give to world missions uh, in December. And so I'd like to share a little bit about what our family has, uh, an update on our family and our return to Southeast Asia. Uh, I'd like to share this morning though, most importantly about what God has been teaching me and what I know that God is doing in our world despite all the craziness and what the, the way that God wants to uh, carry out his plan in the world through us. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm really grateful to be here and I'd like to share with you a story, an update about our work. And if you remember the last time that I was able to tell you about what was going on, I, there was four pictures and the, the what I think the last picture was a picture of three ladies. And I told you that from the day that we set foot in um, our city, we began to work in these migrant worker camps. These uh, workers are coming mainly from Burma and they're coming into our, our uh, city and working and we reach out to them and we, we chronological Bible story. I, we spent a lot of time learning to speak the local language and over the time that we were there, we were able to uh, learn to share the gospel, learn to teach and pray for people. And I shared that uh, on the last week that I was in our city, I shared the gospel with these three ladies, long story short, and I asked them if they were ready to receive faith in Jesus. And they said nothing. They weren't ready. Uh, but the day that I got back to America, after traveling all the way back, the day that I got back, I got a text message uh, from our national partner, believing national believing partner, that said the three ladies, she had led them to faith in Jesus uh, the day I returned. That was exciting. And I'd be honest, the, as time has transpired, I just naturally, I think, uh, I've been worried for these gals. With all that's gone, gone on with the pandemic, I thought maybe they're going to fall through the cracks. Maybe they're not going to be able to be reached and, and to continue to be discipled. But I want to bring you uh, an update on these three ladies in that uh, our national partners and our team there in our city are still meeting with them on a weekly basis, sharing with them, helping them to grow as Christians. And they they are followers of Jesus. They have not turned back to uh, Buddhism and they're still following Jesus. So that is, uh, that's just really exciting to me um, that these gals of course have found Jesus, but now are being discipled. And so the, the work goes on our prayers for years that they would, that, that God would give us a believer in that village turned into three. And those believers are growing in their faith. And so this morning, the passage of scripture that I want us to look at 
is from Romans. And if you have your uh, Bible or your app, please open it up to uh, Romans chapter 8. And to be truthful, Romans is probably one of my favorite books of the Bible. Chapter 8 is a chapter that I think you could read every day and be blessed by what Romans chapter 8 says. And I want to read to you a familiar verse from Romans chapter 8 that will be the basis for us thinking about God's intentionality about what his work is in our world. And just before I read this, here's what I'd like for us to do if possible. We, are, we, we've, we know that we are in this trifecta of human history right now in, as far as America is concerned. I truly believe that in a decade from now, historians and people are going to look back to 2020 and they're going to say what an interesting amount of political unrest and what an interesting amount of social unrest. And it's unbelievable that there was a pandemic, all three of those, and they all three hit as far as big picture history is concerned, like at the same time right at the beginning of 2020 and they carried throughout. So here's what I'd like for us to try to do if possible. I know that wherever we are in whatever situation that we're in, it's easy to take the message that's being told us and just put it right through that lens. But I do believe that where we are in in our world is going to pass. If you look at each, if you look at social unrest that we've had in the past, if you look at political unrest, if you look at even outbreaks of, you know, different types of things, they all pass. And so what I'd like for us to do is not just think about what's happening uh, in, from God's word this morning about through the lens of these, these things that are, we're right in the middle of right now, but I'd like for us to think about them aside from those. They can include those, but those will pass. But God's word and what he's doing in our world remains. That is the case. And so if it's possible, rewind a year to uh, around last Thanksgiving when the political season wasn't going crazy, maybe, and, and there wasn't as much social unrest, and certainly most of us probably didn't know what COVID was at the time. And just, I want us to think about big picture. What will happen in 10 years? What will it be in 10 years from now, in 10 years ago, uh, in light of God's word this morning? So if you have your Bible, Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and it says it's very uh, it's a scripture that many of us have heard before but i think it illustrates especially in verse 29 and 30 an important the importance of what uh, god is doing in our world today and so it says and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose and then in verse 29 it says And and I don't want us to get caught up in the the particular words that is used, but look at this progression. Look at this progression of things. Uh, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to his likeness, to to the likeness of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And we can see in this that God has a plan in our world and God is following his plan in our world and he's doing exactly what he's always done. And I'll tell you the reason why this passage is important to me, I'm going to get back to verse 28 as well, is because during this time, I hope that you have had perhaps a little extra time to spend in God's word and prayer. And he has really taught you something. And what I learned, what, what God said to me, and, I, and that's one thing I absolutely love about God's word, about, about spending time with the Lord, is that he will speak to us specifically to, to you, specifically to me, giving me or you a word that's meant for our hearts and ours alone. And that's the exciting thing about God's word in our lives is that we can go to it and we can receive something just for us. And one of the things that God uh, shared with me in my heart during our, our, my time with him over the last couple of months is that God is doing what he has always done. He is on the move. He has super intentionality about what he's doing. And he's moving at light speed, just like he always has. God isn't slowed down like we've been. I don't say this even to assume that you would think he he was, but he's not confused. He's not taken back. He's not surprised. He's not a, a, 
left off balance by all of the things that are happening in our world. He is doing exactly what he's always done, uh, which is his work in our world. And I'm going to get back to that in a second. But let me, let's look at this passage. Let's look at this verse in Romans 28. For we know that in all things, for we know, we know what God does. His word tells us what he does, what he does. Uh, he, just like we can know that we have eternal life, as the Bible says, just that we can know that in all things, not some things, all things, God works, is working, working. He is doing what he does for the good, not for the bad, to, to give us hope in a future uh, so that we can have life and have it abundantly. God is working for the good for those that love him those that are called his children, those who are adopted into God's family that love him, who are called according to his purpose, who are active at working the things that God tells us to do, who are following the will of God. He's working them for good. That's what God is doing. He's not working all these situations in our world for bad. In fact, just like I said, let's set those aside for a minute and think about a year ago, God was working, doing the things that he does. So what is it? What are the things that God does? Well, I'll tell you, God specifically in his word is at the things, uh, who is doing things in this world that he's always done. What, what are those? Well, I'll give you a few of them. One is that God is calling men to himself. God is not forgotten that he is calling those to himself, people in our world. He wants people to receive faith in him, to be adopted into his family, to be his children, to follow in accordance like he says in this verse. He's calling men to himself. God is, number another thing, God is building his church in this world. The bride of Christ, the church, is not been forgotten. Though, there, though the church may be in decline in some places, it's being built in other places. God is continuing his work of building his church. Another thing that God is doing is he is calling people uh, from the nations to himself, such that in, in Revelation 7, 9, we see that there will be a great multitude from every tribe, nation, and tongue who stand before the throne and are crying, salvation belongs to our God. What else is God doing? Fourth, he is sending workers into the harvest. And this is uh, something that I I'll get back to in a minute. I want to share with you uh, where I see sort of the future of missions going. One of the things that's becoming more and more clear in our world. God is sending workers into the harvest, whether it be workers in Southeast Asia, whether it's workers into the Middle East, some of the most dangerous places for believers in our world, whether it's to Scottsdale, Arizona, or the United States, or wherever. God is sending, raising up workers, and sending them. So God is drawing people, building his church. He's uh, seeking people from the nations and sending them as well to the nations. So God is at work, and we see this in verses 29 and 30. And I, I said, let's not get caught up in the terminology. It's a, it's a, we, we, there's a time and place for us to read about all of these words, but the but the point in verse for us today that I'd like for us to just look at today is big picture that in verse 29 and 30, what God is saying here in the scripture is, I have a plan and I do this and then I do this and I do this and I progress through what I'm doing. Uh, none of the situations that we have in our world are stopping me from calling people and sending people. I want, uh, that's what God is doing at work in our world. Our family has been uh, um, stifled from returning to Southeast Asia, to returning to our country of service. We love being here. We love being here with our church family. We love being here with our parents. But I promise the first opportunity that we have to get on a plane and return to Southeast Asia, we're going to do it because it's where we've been called to be. It's among the people that we love and we want to reach out to. And we, we see what God is doing in our ministry, in our work, in, the, in our city, what God is doing. And we want to be back where God has called us working uh, among our people. And so pray for us, pray for our family that the doors would open. Uh, the, the, just a quick update that I, the only thing I can really tell you that's different uh, is that there might be a way in the coming months that we are able to get onto a new visa 
And that visa would allow us to uh, re-enter the country and, and quarantine and go through all those things, but it might allow us access to the country. So please pray that that might be an option or that in the coming weeks, uh, the uh, country may just simply open again. It might allow for uh, people to return um, and our family as well. And so I, wanna, I want to, as we think about what God is doing in our world, I want us to remember that sometimes we think about the characteristics of God, about what and what he does is sort of like the things that we do, like God's really intentional. I want to be really intentional. I want to get my project at work done. I want to get my homework done. If I'm a student, I, I don't want to procrastinate. That's intentionality. Or we think God is love. And I think, well, I love my wife and that God might love in that way. But I, I think that, it, and without getting into some sort of superhero thing, I think that it's better if we think about God's intentionality, his love, his care, all the attributes that that are of God, that direct God's plan and purpose in this world, I think it would be important if we thought of them as super intentionality, super love, super care, super graciousness, because we're gracious, but not like God. And so God, I believe, has a super intentionality about what he's doing. It's not just sort of, I'm intentional. It's, it's, a, it's a supernatural sending of people to the harvest fields. It's a supernatural... Uh, calling those from nations unto himself so that every tribe, tongue, and, and people will be uh, crying out at the throne, salvation belongs our God. It's a supernatural uh, building of his church. And so what I want us to, what I want us to think about in the, in the few moments that we have left is, I want us to think about the tr what's happening right here. What, what's going on in our hearts? Let me share a story with you. I, I'm sure that Pastor Chad is... Uh, I, I assume he has the opportunity to share this story from when we were uh, when he came out and we went to minister in the mountains. But I travel up into the mountains and when when uh, to to share the gospel with people with a couple of national uh, pastors. And I when we were traveling, I, I before Chad came, I called one of the pastors and said, "You know, Chad's going to be here during the rainy season, and I know that road. That road that we have to travel up that mountain. It's scary without the rain. But if that road is all muddy." Like, I need you to give me your honest opinion. Can we do this? Should, should we take them, this group that's coming up to the mountains? And the pastor said to me, Todd, here's what I think we can do. I, th I think we can go. And here's why. I, he said, I think what we'll do is we'll head up, the, head up the mountain. And as soon as our vehicle doesn't feel right, as soon as anyone in the vehicle is unsure that we shouldn't continue forward, we'll just stop. And you know what we can do? We'll walk up the mountain. We begin the ascent. And our wheels are spinning a little bit, but the four-wheel drive vehicle we're in is, is handling it okay. And we get to a point where the vehicle just basically uh, stops. It can't go any further. And then we weren't in any danger. We just simply stopped the car and was like, at this point, we're walking. We rounded the corner and we saw families and children. We saw them building a road. It was, I, my jaw dropped. I could not believe what I was looking at. Men, women, and children who were carrying little sand bucket, size one gallon kind of sand buckets full of uh, cement that was being mixed and they were pouring a road, but they were just pouring two paths on the road, you know, just enough for your tires to go up. And they were pouring that on the hardest parts of the steepest, muddiest, most difficult parts uh, of the road to get through. And I, I just was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, and we stopped and we began to talk to the, the leaders there and, and just ask, how is this working? Where, how did you come about being able to build this road? <clears throat> and they said the government finally got concrete, rocks and sand and lime or whatever, and let them use a, a small concrete mixing machine, just one of those like gas powered little guys. And they said, here's all the supplies. We're just not going to build it for you. You want to build it, you get your community out and do it. And on this day where it was drizzly rain, there were all of these people in these forms that they had made with poor, you know, wood that they had kind of had and, 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 and rot, uh, you know, rebar through there. It was unbelievable. And, and one gallon bucket by one gallon bucket, you know, they were dumping and building a road. And I asked uh, there was some there was some discussion and we were just we were just amazed none of us had any idea this was going to be the case and in my mind i'm thinking i'm gonna we're gonna be able to come to this community and the communities beyond 
with no problem in the future. We're going to be able to go to these places. And we talked to them and they, and they said, if we just had $200, we could finish this portion of the road. And I said, I looked at Chad and I said, Chad, we, we probably all have an emergency pocket of cash of 200 bucks in us. I know we have it between us. And I said, this is exactly what we want to do in mission work. We want to find people who are motivated, who are willing to do for themselves so that we just partner with them. It's already in motion. They just need the last 10%, the last mile, the, you know, whatever. I said, Chad, I think we need to, we need to help these guys. Can we put the money together? We did it. We gave them the $200. They thanked us profusely and we carried on. And if that's not amazing enough, they're going to finish that portion of the road. We carried on to the next village and we had to walk the whole way and we were exhausted by the time we got to the second village. We were going to the third village. These villages are about a 20 minute drive a piece. So as you can imagine, walking probably took us an hour or two or more. And when we got to the second village up and down these hills, we were absolutely exhausted. And we thought we, and it was actually around four o'clock, I believe. And we were looking around and thinking, there's no way that we're going to get to the next village, our destination where we're going to sleep tonight uh, before nightfall. And at one point, the pastor, I, I said, I said, he said, hey, Todd, look across this, this valley. See it over there? He said, look right over there. You see that white dot? He goes, that's the, the community center or whatever. That's the, the place that we're going. And I looked and I said, you're kidding me. And I thought, we'll never make it. There's no way we could keep walking this. So the pastor said, let's just take off your backpacks. Let's just rest for a few minutes. And let's share the gospel here with, at this house that we're at. We began to share the gospel. The people heard about Jesus, never had hearing about him before. And we had brought some eyeglasses and we did a little eyeglass clinic, totally impromptu. We had this little chart that people could read and they could choose some eyeglasses from there. <clears throat> and when we were finished, I, I just, as all this was happening, we were there about an hour, we we're losing more daylight. I'm looking around, I see a couple of motorcycles. And I, I said to one of the pastors, I said, could we rent these motorcycles from them? I know Chad drives, rides a motorcycle, I ride a motorcycle, the, both the pastors do. I thought, you know, we'll put the other guys on the back. We'll go quickly through the parts up the road where we can. If we have to get off and even push the bikes up, we'll do that or, you know, whatever it is. But at least we'll get there in maybe double the time. And the pastor to me says, hey, hey, we're working on something. That's all I said. And, you know, for me, I'm very, I want to plan. I want to make sure that we don't get caught up in. And he comes to me in a minute and says, hey, somebody has a four-wheel drive vehicle and they're going to take us. And I was like, thank you. I said, tell them we'll pay them, you know, whatever, whatever it's is fair. And we all jumped in the back of this vehicle. We four wheel drive. We got to the, to this village at total dusk. Um, we were able to unload. And I said, tell the guy, if he comes back tomorrow, we'll pay him whatever's fair again. You name it, we'll pay him. Just drive back from this, from town two to town three and pick us up in the morning. We, we did a church that, that evening. We sang, we worshiped, we did the eyeglass clinic the next day it, after the Sunday morning service or before, I don't quite remember. Uh, the, the Chad got a chance to preach. Uh, some of the guys in the group sang a cappella, which in English, of course. And so that was a interesting experience. We left that morning encouraging the believers who were in that village number three. And we, the truck took us back to essentially village number two. We got out. Unknown to us, the guy who we had given the $200 at the first place, he said he was there at village number two. He said, this is my village. I'm the village leader. We... Uh, I run all these, I'm over, I see, oversee all these villages. I care for all these mountain community places. And he said, because of your kindness, he said, Todd, and we're able to, you know, we're able to speak with each other. Ty, I think that he was speaking to a, a white guy and Ty blew his mind a little bit. And he said, Todd, anytime you want to come here, anytime we will shut down the school. We'll shut down whatever is doing. We'll call all of our community to come and you can teach the word of God here. Please bring us back those eyeglasses. We need those glasses for our kids and our people. And we're talking about Walgreens eyeglasses, just those small prescription ones for reading and for close-up basket weaving and handicraft type of things. He said, Todd, if you'll just bring those eyeglasses, we're not, we're not Christians, but we'll, uh, we'll let you meet here and, and take whatever time you like. We've seen the, the care that you've had for our, our community. And then he says this, he says, oh, and you know, like over here across the way, there's a... There's a lady there. She's like the only Christian in our whole area that I know. You may want to visit her. 
my mind is absolutely blown. We've been traveling to these villages without finding one Christian anywhere but the third village. Uh, essentially, I mean, uh, one, or, one or two believers that, that we had helped be, uh, find Jesus. No one else. Not only did we find the right guy, we helped him build his road. We were there at the right moment, literally when they're pouring concrete on the road. We carried on to a place where we thought we were stuck and we were able to do an IGOS clinic. We get back, the village leader's there. He says, come anytime. Come back here and share about Jesus. Bring those glasses. And, hey, by the way, here's another believer that needs your encouragement. This is God's intentionality. This is God working for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. This is God's plan in our world that continues. This is, this is God at work. This is the super intentionality of God that just blows our minds about what God is doing in our world. Despite our efforts, with our efforts, with our prayers, God is at work and doing it. I would just say this, that we're coming up on the Lottie Moon Christmas offering season. And for Southern Baptists, this is a time where uh, 100% of the money given to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, 100% goes straight to field personnel. Our family, other families, uh, the, the, uh, our denomination is the largest sending denomination in the uh, world, long-term sending denomination in the world. And this is how we fund our uh, personnel all over the world by 100%. Now, the, the, the administrative costs, you know, that all organizations have, they're, they're uh, sourced another way. But the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is 100% of what you give goes to field personnel. And 100% of what we give, we, we participate, of course, as well. And so um, Lottie Moon was a, was a gal who was a missionary to China, and uh, she basically reported back to the states and said, we need more support. And so the, uh, they, we now have a offering named after her and our church sets a goal every year and it's been a gigantic goal. And our family is the direct recipients of that. It's what helps us to stay focused on the field. It's what helps us to continue at our work instead of having to constantly think about how am I going to raise support? We, we cooperate as the largest denomination in the country to send. It's what uh, our denomination does so well is we send people to the nations to share the gospel, to the hard places, to the places up in the mountains where Chad went and broke a rib, I understand. This is where uh, that money goes to. And so I encourage you, I encourage you in this, that this year uh, our sending organization is... Uh, is trying to raise 6% greater than last year. It's not, it's not a huge percent. I mean, 6% of what our church uh, gave last year would, would be pretty, pretty manageable. Uh, and so they're just, they're, that's sort of what they're asking is they're, they're, that's a goal that they're making is over the next five years, actually, the churches would, would give uh, through the missions offering an additional 6%. And so uh, I just want to, I want to leave you with this thought about missions there. I want to introduce you to a term and I want to give you a challenge uh, in, cl in closing, not only the challenge to pray for our family, and I am grateful for your prayers, not only the challenge to, to give to uh, the, the, this Lottie Moon Christmas offering that sends workers who are willing to go to Southeast Asia, the Middle East, South America, the entire globe. Not only that, but also to pray for a UUPG. So what is a UUPG? It's an acronym for unreached, unengaged people group. We have people who are unreached in our world. And these are people where there is no, basically it's been said there's no believer, no Bible, no church. And then we have people who are also, un, they're, they're unreached people groups, but they're also unengaged. And this unengaged means that on some level, we don't even know where they are. We don't know where they exist. And so we are trying to find them so that we could one day have a believer Bible or church in their area and we can get the gospel to them. You can go to uh, peoplegroups.org and you can search for people groups in Southeast Asia 
And I would encourage you to find an, a, a UUPG in Southeast Asia and begin to pray for them, that they would be located and that there would be believers made and that there would be um, a church in their area so that disciples can grow in their faith. Pray for UUPGs, pray for the Lottie New Christmas offering and pray for um, our family as we seek to return to the calling that God has sent us to in Southeast Asia. Let's pray together. Lord, you're good. You, you know, you understand the situation on the ground. You have a plan that is super naturally intentional about getting done what you want to accomplish in this world. And we're grateful, Lord, to have been called into your family, adopted into your family, and co-laborers with you at the task. Thank you for using us in that way. Lord, I pray encouragement during this time, this difficult time in our world, but to know that you're at work and you continue to be at work. Thank you for this church. I pray that you would bless abundantly here those who are in the service, those who lead God in, and the ministries carried out. Lord, we love you. We follow you. We will worship you. Thank you for being on our God, for, for uh, being our God, for dying on the cross for us. We love you this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been good to be with you. Thanks for allowing me to share. God bless. Thank you for joining us here at First Southern. We're so glad that you were here and we hope and pray that through today's worship and prayer and the speaking of God's word, that you've grown closer to Jesus. And let me just say for just a moment, if you don't know Jesus or you want to know more about our church, please reach out to us now. You can either go to our website and click on the contact us page or go to the email address that's at the bottom of your screen right now and we would love to answer any questions that you might have, especially those questions about beginning a life-changing relationship with Jesus. So don't hesitate. Go ahead and either go to our website to the contact us page or go to that email and send us an email. We would love uh, to talk to you. Um, there's a lot going on here in the, the life of First Southern. So let me address a few things and uh, give you a few announcements. First off, uh, Todd mentioned uh, the International Mission Board, or, or, and I mentioned it. And basically, for the next about month and a half, we're going to be collecting what's called the Lottie Moon Offering. Lottie Moon Offering, uh, the, the money collected for that goes directly to send missionaries around the world to tell others about Jesus. Uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, of which we are a part of, is one of the largest mission-sending organizations in the world. And the Lottie Moon Offering that we will be collecting for the next month and a half is a huge part of our being a, a, a large missions sending organization. And so if you would like to give to the Lottie Moon offering uh, to help missionaries go around the world, uh, you can go to our website, click on the giving tab, uh, and there you can go through the process. Just make sure that you click uh, that you want your offering to go to the Lottie Moon missions offering uh, when you get to that point in the process. Or you can always send us a check uh, uh, just make sure on the memo line that you address uh, that you want that money to go towards missionaries or, or the Lottie Moon mission offering. And we will make sure that that money, every penny gets sent uh, to our organization to send missionaries around the world. Also, we have a Veterans Day picnic coming up. It's not on Veterans Day. It's the Saturday following Veterans Day, which is November 14th. So Saturday, November 14th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, mark your calendars. Plan on being here at the church. We'll do it outside. We're going to have a pork barbecue contest, a dessert contest, and a cornhole contest. We're going to have a wonderful time. It'll be safe outdoors. And so we welcome you and invite you to come. We also have a guest speaker um, who uh, is connected to our church, a former uh, chaplain and uh, uh, military officer. And so come join us for that wonderful time of honoring our veterans, but also so gathering together and celebrating and, and spending time with one another uh, as Christians. 
Uh, so again, I'm glad that you've been with us today. We hope that you've grown in Christ. If you have any questions or any needs that we might be able to help meet, uh, please reach out to us here at the church this week. Uh, but one way or the other, we hope that this week you will grow further in your relationship with Jesus. So stay safe, stay connected, and stay in your faith. And God bless. Have a great week.